the new window to Russia. Once one of the most close cities in the world, the biggest naval base in the Far East, Vladivostok. We are in one of the most demanding military academies in the country, the Nakhimov School. In the north of the town, 560 pupils have come together to celebrate the matriculation of a new comrade. Pupil Ivan Pelebushka has only been at the school for a few weeks. He already has the reflexes of a professional soldier. Pupils join at the age of 11. These young people are destined to become the elite of Russia's naval forces. The ceremony takes place in front of his mother. These young people will go on to defend this pearl of the Far East, the biggest city in Asia on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. In the winter, it's minus 25 degrees centigrade. Daily life continues on a frozen sea. The locals love to battle the elements and the severe weather. In the summer, the coast transforms into a Russian mini Saint-Tropez. By day and also by night. For a century and a half, it has been the impenetrable bastion of the Russian Navy. Now, the city is in the midst of a capitalist economic boom. The hills and the colorful houses are reminiscent of San Francisco. In this new Russian Eldorado, we'll see how fortunes can be made in just a few years. Very good. You next. You next. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> We'll visit one of the biggest casinos in the Far East, its preferred clients, the Chinese. In the winter, when temperatures fall, this Eldorado can also become a nightmare. The city offers little comfort to those left out in the cold. An investigation into the new Russia at the edge of the world. An eight-hour flight from Moscow, Vladivostok forms a crossroad between China, Japan and North Korea in the Russian Far East. The port was constructed in the 1850s around an inlet. 19th century Tsarist architecture still dominates the center of town. Until 1990, Vladivostok was close to foreigners and only accessible to citizens issued with special permit. Hundreds of tower blocks, social housing, bear witness to the communist past. The strategic position of the town made it an impenetrable fortress for 150 years. Today, the military port is home to 50 ships and 23 submarines. Mm -hmm. 
Behind these gates is the Russian Navy's latest addition, an ultra-modern warship, the Sofasheni, or the perfect in English. Exceptionally, we have been given permission to board. Yes, Captain Dmitry Belinov is 33 years old. He was born in Vladivostok. He has been serving in the Russian Navy for 15 years. The Perfect cost nearly 130 million euros. The vessel is able to hide from radars. It can reach speeds of up to 28 knots or 48 kilometers per hour. Its weapons are state of the art. We see the cannon in action in this footage supplied by the Navy. The vessel's other main advantage is its anti-submarine missile firing system. It can fire 45 of them. Each costs 500,000 euros. Captain Blinov was selected from among the very best of the Russian Navy to command this warship and its 105 crew. His proudest moment was receiving President Vladimir Putin on board the ship in person. As a sign of the importance President Putin attaches to Vladivostok, he came in person to inaugurate the ship September last year. He wants to reinstate Russian military power, which this vessel symbolizes and the honor of welcoming him fell to Captain Blinov. The Russian president inspects the ship from top to bottom. It's a significant event. Russia wants to show its neighbors its muscles. Russia shares a 19-kilometer border with North Korea, a country in conflict with most of its neighbors. The city is within missile range of the unpredictable North Korean dictator. В данном свете что я могу сказать? Значит, в принципе, любой сосед может быть опасный. Вот. Но на данный момент пока у нас со всеми мир, со всеми мир. Поэтому мы люди военные, мы ничего, в принципе, не боимся и не переживаем. Если что-то вдруг может случиться, то это случится. Когда оно будет, тогда и будем разговаривать. А пока бояться нечего. For the sailor, commanding this jewel of the Russian Navy is the fulfillment of a childhood dream. В принципе, стать моряком, ну, я еще с детства уже. Были фильмы у нас патриотические, смотрели мы постоянно. Побывала как-то раз на визите, нас привели вот на соседний корабль, я еще маленьким был. Вот, показали, я посмотрел и приобщился. В принципе, после этого решил стать военным моряком. The officer completed his training just a few kilometers from there, at the Nachimov Naval School.
The establishment has been extremely successful since Putin came to power. The pupils go through a selection process. The pupils are in class eight hours a day, six days a week. The principal is a rear admiral, one of the highest ranks of the Russian Navy, Rear Admiral Burakov. Today's program, the pupils must write a poem describing the town's glory. Three minutes of time, or even two, will be enough to prepare something that is St. Quinn for our theme of the city of Vladivostok, the city of Vladivostok, we are discussing in groups. At the top of the class is Denis, born in Vladivostok. He is only just 11. Denis, we finish. The word is to be proud. Thank you, guys, that you... He reads out a verse. A beautiful man, a beautiful man, a beautiful man. Жить, служить, гордиться. Да. Город воинской славы. Владивосток. Очень тонко подмечено, что действительно Владивосток – город воинской славы. There is even a song dedicated to the glory of the city. The pupils know it off by heart. На границе великой державы свой недремлющий взор на восток держит гордо и свято город воинской славы наша крепость the trainee sailors are all boarders. Here is Denise's dormitory. They are two to a room. The young pupils have very little free time. I'm afraid. I can't make it to the cinema tonight. Every spare moment is dedicated to revision. В третьем упражнении тебе нужно каждому примеру подбирать из два докоренных слова. Инициатива, может быть. As with adults, the children each have a rank, and the highest ranked here is Dennis. He is head of barracks and in charge of three comrades. А главного это проверять заправку кровати, чтобы они были натянуты, не было никаких складок. Проверять заправку имущества, чтобы она была ровной. Проверять учебники, как бы утром, когда ты выходишь на занятия, и он, ну, как бы вообще, в общем, следит за порядком. The inside of the room is simple; only a small personal touch is allowed. А мое личное вот этот корабль, который давно уже стоит у моего, стоял у моего деда и. И почему ты, почему ты решил стать военным? Я решил стать военным, так как я хочу стать подводником. А почему? Почему тебя это интересует? Ну, не знаю, мне как-то с детства привлекала военная карьера, профессия. Спасибо. Ваша идея, с чем это связано? Of course, the pupils study the traditional subjects. Maths, geography, physics and electronics at the school. Три торпеды, крейсер уничтожил. Линкор, 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 шел. But here there is a subject which doesn't exist elsewhere, the naval battle lesson. A simulation program where the pupils are plunged into extremely realistic battle situations. They play against each other in teams. Победили линкоры в составе шести кораблей против трех эсминцев. Скажем так, можно было. Плюс в нашем учреждении, потому как у нас морская специфика, то корабли позволят э, нахимовцам изучить историю кораблестроения, историю вооружения, потому что мировых, опять же, мировых э, держав, потому что присутствуют не только корабли отечественные, точно так же присутствуют корабли других наций, то есть, ну, стран. It's nearly time to leave for the weekend. It's time to change. Dennis and his comrades have a uniform for every occasion. 
Это новая форма для парада. Мы ее специально храним, чтобы она оставалась чистой. Преподаватели по отдельным дисциплинам, такие как русский язык, математика, за этим не следят. Классный руководитель. Он и раз в неделю проходит и проверяет заправку. И если есть замечания, то он эти замечания записывает и на вечерней поверке озвучивает. Every Saturday at 6 p.m. it's time to see the mums. They all wait eagerly to collect their sons. In a few years, Dennis's dream to sail on board a submarine will become a reality. Ну, во-первых, то, что он сумел пройти все испытания, которые, да, очень сложно сюда попасть. Он это сумел сделать. Мы очень горды, то, что ему хватило сил, смелости. Знаний тех, которые он получил в школе начальной, романтическое больше, <laughs> чем ну, стабильное, надежное. Не знаю, <laughs> не знаю. Для меня это романтика. But in recent times Vladivostok has become more than a military fortress. It's also a city in the midst of an economic boom. Cargo ships in transit dock here year in, year out transporting wood, petrol, and gas from Siberia. Every year in September, President Putin welcomes the Japanese, Koreans, and Chinese for a major Asian economic forum. To attract foreign investment, he has given the town duty-free status. Billions of rubles have been invested in colossal construction projects. Two gigantic bridges were opened in 2012 to improve access to the town. In this Eldorado, fortunes can be made in just a few years. We have a meeting with the wealthiest men in the town, two brothers, the Bobakokyan brothers. Like many people living here, their family is from the other side of Russia. Their father, George, was Armenian. Forty-two-year-old Eduard is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the family business. His brother Armes, 45, takes care of relations with the authorities, the police and politicians. If you want to do business in Russia, you need someone taking care of this. So who's the boss? Who boss? Who boss? <laughs> I'm small. The youngest boss. <laughs> Я занимаюсь клиниками, он занимается более глобальными вопросами, Общий отношения, вопрос. власть, какие-то глобальные вопросы. А я занимаюсь чисто вот рутинными вопросами. The two men direct a small empire of dental clinics and surgeries as a duo. In Russia, when you make business, um, I think maybe it was like 15 years ago, you need to have good car, good look good shoes, uh, suits, and watches. But right now, everything, it doesn't matter. You wear what you like, what it's comfortable for you. Uh, you have uh, beautiful uh, watches on, by the way, both of you. Roger to me. <laughs> no, it's uh, small accessories. Small accessories, 100,000 dollars. <laughs> 130,000, 80,000 dollars. Yeah. It's to be on Roger to be. Like all the newly rich in Vladivostok, the two brothers' garage is well stocked. Luxury German cars for all the family. Armand's car, my car, Armand's wife's car. This is my family car for children. Neither of the brothers has a degree, but after the death of their father, they created a private dental health group, the George Dental Group, named after their father. <laughs> Today they run a small empire of clinics. They have 10 in the Vladivostok region. The average price of a crown at the brothers' clinics is 1,500 euros. A lot of money in Russia. Amin and his brother see themselves as pillars of the city's Armenian community, which is around 8,000 people. In order to maintain this position, they have launched a very ambitious project. 
We are going to the Armenian church. This church we built with my friends uh, in 2001, almost uh, 16 years ago. They have undertaken the task of renovating the only Armenian church in the town, which was in ruin. In support of them, the community has invested more than a million dollars in the works. They imported the red bricks directly from Armenia. <laughs> the two brothers have even recruited a priest to direct the offices. The big uh, project uh, to let young people see this, feel it, and uh, understand what is Armenian life, what is Armenian language, music, everything. So Do not forget, because 10,000 kilometers, we are so far from Armenia. We need to show people that they have small Armenia here too. To wrap up their project, the two brothers are trying to convince an Armenian property developer, Artur, to put money in the construction. But the man needs convincing. I think maybe another year will be done, another year, because a lot of things doing and a lot of things needs to be done also. It looks like it's almost finished. Он говорит, выглядит, как будто уже все готово. Я говорю, details, small details. The business will not be concluded straight away. Eduard has to get back to the office. He has meetings. Amin, the big brother, goes to lunch. He has a boat which allows him to eat in the more beautiful parts of town, by the sea. His speedboat is moored in a private yacht club. People live, look like how people look, Russian people. This is boat from my friend. He bought from United States $450,000 five years ago. Name them was a boat Mamba. Mamba. He's owner of this uh, yacht club. His name is Ruslan. He's right now in Italy. With his friend, the property developer, he's decided to go for lunch on an island just a few minutes away from the city by speedboat. The priest of the Armenian church is also there. To sailor's boat, Amin employs a captain year-round. The team disembarks on a small beach. It's one of the prettiest corners of Vladivostok, very close to the town center. In the summer, this private beach attracts all the region's VIPs. This place, we a small uh, sea, small restaurant on the beach. And the owner is my friend. We will drink wine and we will eat fresh crab. And this is scallop they just took from the sea. Scallop. Listen, we are not bitchy. We need to do something. So we eat like it was on the table. And they say that Russians start without food at once. Santé, santé, santé. santé. Почему? Париж тебе. Подожди, а, ты откроешь, да, ты откроешь, что за crab in Vladivostok cost only seven dollars per kilo. In Europe, one hundred dollars per kilo. Unbelievable. I can't live in Moscow, it's no sea. Not possible. I like it where it's sea, where I can swim, where I can spend time, where I can move. In Moscow, it's you need to do a lot. You can stay in traffic maybe a couple days. A bit like in the Côte d'Azur, a musician comes to sing a song at the end of the meal. 
His name is Vitali. He has something of an 80s look to him and is known as the American. She's got it. Yeah, baby, she's got it. Well, I'm your Venus. I'm your fire, dear desire. Well, I'm your Venus. I'm your fire, dear desire. <laughs> In fact, the guitarist owns the beach and he likes to come to greet his guests. Туристы хорошо, что приезжают. Нет проблем. Со всего мира приезжают люди. Just like you'd find in Saint-Tropez. He has photos of his most famous customers on the walls in the beach restaurant. Vitaly acquired the beach after the fall of the Soviet Union in the beginning of the 90s. His home is situated just above in the hills. Rainbow. He lives with his elderly parents, survivors of the old USSR. His father arrived in the region as a pilot during the Cold War. We see him pictured here with the governor of the province. He was a fighter pilot. Это русский остров. И здесь шесть лет гонял американских разведчиков, стрелял по американским разведчикам. Я единственный остался, кто, кто американских разведчиков здесь стрелял по ним. Шесть лет. But Vitaly hasn't invited our main over to give him a history lesson. He has something else in mind. He wants to make it hotel from this house. Look it, look it. He's trying to persuade Armin to invest money in his extension project. И все, и начинается. И... Распись, распишитесь, да, и все, да, можно да, вас да, отцеплять. Да, да, да. А здесь они ко мне пришли, блядь. Внизу э, будет. Ну это раз в год, два раза в год, Виталий. Не, не, не. Друзья не, их. Не, не, не. У, меня, у меня уже столько, да? когда я начал вот говорить о том, что я буду гостиницу делать, все за. Тут у меня столько будет людей. Да Фима даже мне сказал, говорит, я забью ее нахер битву. Ну да, правда. Своими людьми, которые у меня. Поперли, люди ждут неудобно. Поехали, let's go! Armin doesn't seem convinced. In any case, he never makes decisions alone. On the other side of the city is the two brothers' headquarters. Watched by a dozen security cameras, this is the family home. Every Sunday, the Babakokyan clan gathers here. Giant sculptures of lions and gargoyles, inspired by Notre Dame, guard the property. Inside looks like a castle fort with its medieval atmosphere. The firm's initials, GDG for George Dental Group, can be seen all over the house. And also the lion, the coat of arms created by the family. Мама, спасибо тебе за стол. We are greeted by the matriarch, the two brothers' mother. She is Russian. Next to her is Eduard's wife, Olga, and Karina, Amen's wife. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. There are also some friends. A total of three generations around the table. The latest addition is seven months old. <laughs> Let's go to drink for meeting. For friendship, for friendship, for friendship. For friendship. The Babakokyan clan toast with French wines and eat European products, which are difficult to obtain following sanctions from Europe since 2014, after the annexation of Crimea. 
Our main joke started is contraband. You cannot find in Russia legally this product. I would love food. I would love food. My friend came for me last month and they brought for me two kilos of Parmesan. What else? Uh, Italian uh, wine or Australian wine or uh, uh, what? French wine. Anyway, we have everything here. No problem. The two brothers and their friends are very attached to their European roots. It is a recurring theme at the table. I'm a Yebro. Look at me. You understand? J'aime beaucoup la langue en français. So we are in Asia? No. We are in Asia. We are in Asia, but I feel I'm a Yebro. I have the fucking cruelty Yebro mentality. Азия. Географически, географически мы находимся в Азии. Ментально, 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 ментально мы европейцы. Или вы в России, в Европе? We are European, European, but with the Asian angle, because we have Asian taste, more Asian, so we can appreciate both cultures. What's sure is that in terms of tourism, Vladivostok plays the Asian card. Every year they welcome nearly 200,000 visitors from Japan, Korea and China. A constantly growing figure. They come for the seaside and a taste of Europe. To attract investment and Chinese tourists, the government has created a special zone in the north of the town where businesses pay less tax. The symbol of this duty-free zone is the casino, Le Tigre de Cristal, its name written in French. It was built almost solely to cater for players from China. There are no casinos in China, but the country is obsessed with gambling. At the Tigre de Cristal, people play 24 hours a day. Flights arrive from China at all hours. The manager of the Casinos Hotel, Theo Tetsopoulos, is half French, half Greek. He uh, manages nearly 1,000 employees. Uh, what about, we have 140 people arriving uh, today, no? One group. For the Chinese in Beijing, it is quicker to come to Vladivostok than to go to play in the other Asian gaming empire, Macau. We are very close to the Asiatic countries. So the majority of our clients, the hotel, is more than 85% come from Asia and the majority of the China of the North. To attract the wealthy Chinese, Theo has a trick up his sleeve, this presidential suite. One hundred and eighty meters squared with a sauna for a touch of Russian tradition. And a fifty square meter bathroom. C'est la chambre la plus grande de l'hôtel, mais la chambre la plus grande à Vladivostok aussi. Et avec ça, c'est aussi la chambre la plus chère. C'est à peu près 1500 euros par nuit. To look after the guests, the casino has also recruited a Russian with Korean origins who speaks Chinese. Our guests from France. Je vous présente Kirill. En fait, c'est le responsable pour les relations avec nos clients via Epicinois. He brings us into a games room conceived especially for Chinese players. Не стоит нам, наверное, долго здесь находиться, потому что скоро они уже приедут, поэтому я вкратце вам все объясню. Ну, она достаточно очень тяжело ее прочитать, почти невозможно. Плюс э, игрок сам делает выбор. Ну, в первую очередь начнем с боксов. Э, обратите внимание, э, их всего здесь 8, но нету, не хватает одного бокса, номера 4. Потому что для китайцев э, цифра 4 созвучна со словом смерть. Это во-первых. The same attention to detail is seen in the casino's biggest restaurant. The menu is Chinese, the chef is Chinese, and they serve the nation's favorite dish, crab. The name of the restaurant was not chosen at random either. The Double Eight. Logotip это и тоже грубо говоря китайское суеверие. Две восьмерки, две парные восьмерки. А обозначение богатства. 
I don't think. Today is a special evening at the Tigre de Cristal. Stelios Tsifetakis, the director, is making a final inspection. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. All ready. Ready for tonight? Da. Da. <laughs> so what time are we going to have the DJ starting? Eight. Eight. Stelios' ambition was to make his establishment the talk of Asia, and he has spared no expenses. It's a bit hectic, or our uh, artists are getting uh, ready for the performance tonight. Uh, we're celebrating our two years anniversary, so it's a party tonight to thank our guests and to thank our staff for their two years of operation. We've seen what has happened for the last two years since we opened the influx of uh, tourists coming to Vladivostok. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. You're okay? Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. The owners of the casino have made the journey especially for the occasion. They are also Chinese from Hong Kong and wish to remain discreet. Thank you. Everything okay? Food is excellent. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Yes. The evening star attraction is Russia's biggest pop star, Nyusha. <laughs> Her videos get over 300 million views on YouTube. Hello. Hi. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Ну, конечно, я очень люблю свою страну, понимаю, что она необъятна, когда приезжаю во Владивосток, потому что действительно очень большой путь, и приезжая сюда, все-таки уже немножко другая атмосфера и немножко другие люди. 2,500 spectators crowd into the building. It's time for the pop star from Moscow to enter the stage. success, people are coming and keep coming, and that's what we want to celebrate our second anniversary with. Behind the bright lights of the new Vladivostok, the Soviet city has not disappeared, far from it. Most of the town's housing consists of Soviet tower blocks, single-story dwellings with corrugated iron roofs and wasteland. In winter, temperatures can drop to minus 25 degrees centigrade. It's not easy for those left behind from the Vladivostok dream. It's Sunday in a working class district in the city. An association distributes hot meals and basic essentials, and there is a crowd. There are half a dozen volunteers. Most of them are under 30 years old. They come here every week. Sofia is one of the team. She's a 21-year-old primary school teacher. Vladivostok is tough for those left on the sidelines. This 45-year-old woman lives in a nearby housing block. She comes every Sunday. In the depth of winter, there are even people living on the streets in icy temperatures. This is the case for Nikolai. He has just collected some provisions from the forecourt of the Orthodox Church. We go with him. 
he has set up his winter space just a stone's throw from a social housing zone. He has set himself up between these enormous hot water pipes, which supply the town with central heating. He has cobbled together a tiny home under a simple plank. Nikolai has been living here for a year and a half. He's 65 years old. He's originally from Kaliningrad, on the complete other side of Russia. Since losing his papers, he's been unable to receive his pension, nor is he able to travel around Russia. Но только не заработал. Мои безразумные ветки работали. Ну сейчас не получаю вот как документов нет. А то я сне снимал. Воды погреть надо. О, есть. In Vladivostok there isn't a single homeless shelter for people like him. However, this capital on the edge of the world is one of the most closely watched in the country. The city is under close police surveillance all throughout the year. President Putin wants to make it a showcase for Russia. The police have their work cut out for them with drunks and petty thieves. А где человек? А человек где у нас? Выводит This evening, there's a car thief. The man risks up to five years in prison. In spite of police efforts and the cold, crime rates are double than those in Moscow. Vladivostok is at the same latitude as the Côte d'Azur. However, winter lasts six months from October to March. The sea freezes and the layer of ice can reach a meter thick. Here, it is traditional to take advantage of this to go fishing. They have an original fishing technique. Ну, рискованно это весной и рискованно, когда замерзать начинает, это, ну, в ноябре перед Новым годом, да, проваливаются, бывают. Ну, ну, видите, это рыбаки, народ азартный. The rose fishermen's car stretch for miles, sometimes very far from the coast. Each takes on the forces of nature and makes his own little holes in the ice. Sometimes for very slim pickings. <laughs> Some of Vladivostok's young people get their adrenaline elsewhere. They are not afraid of winter either. Half an hour from the center of town, we meet Daniel and Juri, who are 25 and 31 years old. Today, the temperature is minus 25. Their passion is surfing, never mind the season. They are making the most of this bay, which never freezes over. Девочки голые. Ну, они смотрят удивительно, удивляются нам. Удивляются то, что людей, как бы, как людей азарт такой, да, к катанию, то что они любят так серфинг, то что готовы залазить в холодную воду. 
but for the wealthy, the Great North is the place to go fishing. We join Eduard, one of the Millionaire Brothers. Every month he brings his friends to his second home in the Siberian forest. Roads is good, weather is good today, everything is perfect. It will be good fun. I need to go out. After a few hours' drive, we reach a helicopter base. The rest of the journey must be completed by air. The two brothers have their own helicopter, an Mi-2, which dates back to the Soviet era. We fly over the taiga, this forest of firs and birches, which covers nearly all of Siberia. It takes nearly an hour and a half to get to our destination. Lost in the middle of the forest, we are almost 100 kilometers from civilization. This secondary home is in fact a complex of more than 10 buildings. Each guest is given his own chalet. It's possible to live here in total solitude and in the greatest comfort. Amin, the older brother, got here earlier on today. The two Armenians bought the property from a widow of another millionaire who was killed in a helicopter accident in a storm a few minutes from here. She wants two or three million dollars. We make her offer and she will give us for good price. First of all, you need to be very rich. Second, you need to love natural because nobody we like rich people, but nobody wants to live in minus 40. It needs to be crazy like we are. <laughs> the walls are decorated with the brothers' hunting trophies. Wolves. Mountain goats, boars and elk. Three years ago, my friend killed uh, this animal and it's around 12 years old. It's unbelievable, nice looking, nice. Yeah, it's very rare, and we never see before like uh, raga, taki raga, we never saw before. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of equipment, they have everything they need. Snowmobiles and helicopters. The brothers have three in total for extra safety. This morning, they have decided to go fishing for trout. We are heading for a frozen river several kilometers from here. The taiga is overflowing with wild animals. Here, a herd of wild pigs. There, some elk. After a 20-minute flight, it's time to set up the fishing camp. Armin knows the area like the back of his hand. Under this ice, the river is full of fish. It's the height of luxury. He has brought live frogs with him, which he gets from China, and tiny fishing rods. All is calm under the ice, and then, suddenly, <laughs> Look, it's around two years old, two years old, fish. We leave it and after 30 minutes it will be done. Sometimes it's no fishing, because maybe fish no, sleeping, no, maybe no. fish sun. But sometimes two hours you just take every five minutes, every three minutes. 
Ой, мама, ух, ой. Ух ты. Сам фиш, нейм Линок. Five cigars, 15 holes and 40 frogs later, it's time to set up the barbecue. For wood, they can just help themselves on side. They love life in the wild and good food. Uh, okay, this is some parts of Russian fishing, fish soup. Right now it's cold, but we just need to warming, fish, change, paper, salt and done. <laughs> The fish, caught a few minutes ago, is prepared on site by the handyman. He's Armenian, like all the employees at the camp. His name is Bakus. <laughs> Bakus from Armenia. <laughs> In reality, it is hardly fine dining. It's not to catch fish. We can buy fish. We can go to the market and buy. But when you catch it, you spend time here. You spend time with nature, with no telephones, no big stories, no politics, nothing, no business. Just you relax. Your mind relax. When I go back, I feel twice better with energy. New ideas come. You clean your mind here, you understand? The two brothers come here every month, above all to party, without wives, among friends, and of course, the drinks always flow freely. <laughs> the drink in the plastic bottle is homemade in Armenia. Putin for Putin, okay? For Macron, Putin, okay? No, 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 Macron, Putin. <laughs> See, <laughs> Macron, he likes older women, <laughs> and uh, Putin, he likes younger women. So that's why we vote for Putin. <laughs> oh, joke. We like it, Macron and Putin <laughs> together. <laughs> together, we like it, both president. <laughs> The toasts carry on until late in the evening. Anyway, thank you, thank you. Thank you. For Russia. For Russia. For Russia, with love. The night ends in the banya, a Russian tradition. It's a type of sauna. Sometimes twice a week. And when you go hunting or fishing, it's a must. It's good for alcohol too, to evaporate. You beat each other with birch branches before throwing yourself in the snow. Phew! <laughs> <laughs>